But Camilla, Camilla Rossi Chauvenet. What, what's the story with your name, first of all? It's too long, I admit, it's too long. Italian Wine Podcast. Chin Chin with Italian Wine People. Welcome to another episode of On the Road Edition, hosted by Stevie Kim. Join her for today's part one of two episodes as she sits down in conversation with Masseria Couturi Winery's Camilla Rossi Chauvenet. This massive estate is located in Manduria, Puglia, in a calm and peaceful place. And so listen in as Stevie talks to Camilla about her aspirations for the future, the traditions, the food, the wine, and the running of this amazing Southern Italian property. Ciao ragazzi. Welcome to Italian Wine Podcast. Uh, we are, of course, on the road. This is the special on the road um, edition in Puglia. And here we're here with Masseria Couturi. We've spent an entire day with Camilla, a friend of ours from Verona, actually. And right now we're going to taste some wines. We're going to taste two wines in particular, but Camilla, Camilla Rossi Chauvenet. What, what's the story with your name, first of all? It's too long, I admit, it's too long. <laughs> Camilla is my first name, and uh, Rossi Chauvenet, it's uh, uh, they two, two surnames. They uh, come from uh, France, so since a long time ago. And uh, So your family's uh, origin is from France? Yes, even if nobody's speaking French, except me, <laughs> because uh, I've spent uh, some, some time there. It's really difficult to, to spell it. Every day I have to <laughs> spell it in, in uh, some occasions, but uh, yeah, it's my name, so. Camila, tell us a little bit about your wines from Masseria Couturi. How many, first of all, how many wines are there? Yeah, uh, how many well, labels? we produce uh, six uh, labels, so six uh, different wines, uh, four IGT and two uh, DOC. The four IGT are uh, mainly uh, the Piano, Fiano Minutolo, uh, Negro Amaro Rosé and Red and Primitivo. And then we also have other two uh, DOC, Primitivo, both of them, Hidro and Monte Diavoli, the ones that we are having now. And um, why are your four wines IGT and not DOC? I decided to produce four IGT to, to be much more free, to valorize the, the variety themselves and, uh, and then uh, to valorize the, the DOC as well but the, with the traditional method. So today we're going to try, um, these are new wines, right? Is that yes. correct? Yeah. Okay, so what are we going to taste today? There are two wines. First of all, um, I see that you have this label right here. You're completely organic. Yes. All of your wines are organic. Yeah, absolutely. We are organic since uh, 2008, so certified since we arrived here because uh, Masteri Futuri is one block of uh, 300 hectares. Crazy. And, uh, That's huge. We saw today that it is absolutely huge. It's a part of a nature reserve, so that's why it's a choice, but also it's kind of a way to respect uh, the territory and the landscape. Uh, and uh, of course, it's a choice uh, of lifestyle as well. So we are producing, um, for example, either, even other uh, products uh, that we are eating and offering in restaurants uh, like uh, the pasta, olive oil and so on. So, it was uh, kind of uh, the unique uh, choice uh, to, to, to be organic because uh, with our guests uh, we are walking around and uh, being organic has been uh, the, the only way to, to, to be here. Um, so let me um, see what we are going to taste today. There are two wines, right? Kidra. Kidro is, what is Kidro, first of all? In Masseria Couturi, we have uh, probably, we, we are the unique farm that has uh, three protagonists, let's say. Kidro, which is uh, the longest river in Puglia, eight kilometers, that is starting uh, in these areas, so underneath the, the, the soil of uh, Masseria, and uh, is uh, the water that uh, is uh, irrigating uh, naturally uh, our fields. Monte Diavoli, which is uh, the unique peak of uh, 117 meters on the sea level, 
uh, we are in a completely flat area, so this peak uh, was called Monte dei Diavoli, like the devil's mountain, because they were, weren't used to see this kind of little mountains, uh, especially near by the sea, and so they probably thought that there could be some uh, devils <laughs> and some spirits uh, in the mountain. So the Messapian population, there was a settlement here, so before the Romans, these people built up a kind of a temple to preserve uh, the fire, the, the special fire inside, because it was kind of a special, uh, special temple. That's why it's really famous uh, all over the, this area and many tourists are coming to, to visit it and to, to see it. And then the third uh, protagonist uh, is uh, Bosco di Cuturi, which is a, um, a century kind of forest with uh, really big uh, trees and you feel like um, to be in, in the past because uh, it's really unusual to, to, to be in a forest uh, so big uh, with these uh, huge trees of centuries uh, uh, of age. All right, let's taste these wines. What, um, let's taste the wines. Yeah. So, which one should we start? We we should start from Kidro, the DOC of 2019. This is uh, a bit lighter compared to the Monte Diavoli uh, because we decided to uh, to age it uh, uh, to vinify in steel tanks and then to age it uh, uh, in. Uh, Tono for one year and uh, more or less uh, more than 12, 12 months, about 16 months. And then uh, the rest we mm. age it in bottle. So it's a 19 and um, it's uh, the first time we present it. So I'm really uh, proud of it. <laughs> so this is the first vintage you're putting? Yeah. First vintage with the, with the DOC. I mean, uh, Monte Diavoli is also DOC and is a 17. But uh, the, the first uh, bottle of Kidro is uh, it, this one, so the 19. So I have a question for you. Maybe you can answer it afterwards. But they're both Primitivo di Manduria. Mm -hmm. Why do they have two different names? May I see it? Yes. The difference is uh, in the aging of the wines and also in the selection we made uh, in the fields. Because we have mainly uh, clay all over but some parcels are also have a different color of clay. So we have red clay, white clay. So we decided to play uh, and, and understand what was coming from uh, the white uh, clay. And this one, uh, the Kidro, is coming from the red clay and the Monte Diavoli from the white one. This is Kidro. Yeah. And it says here, between myth and legend, Kidro runs through the slopes of the Masseria. With its pure waters, satisfies the mouth of an instinct volcano and dives into the sea. This so there was a volcano here? Yeah. No, not uh, Monte Diavoli, it wasn't a volcanic uh, peak, but uh, yeah. this area there is a, a volcano near to the water, to the sea, and uh, is where uh, the, the river is, uh, is coming from before to, to go to the sea, to enter in the sea. Okay, so let's taste the wines. So do, would you like to tell us a little bit about um, this wine in terms of the tasting notes? Yes, uh, the color is uh, quite ruby, so let's say it's a, it's a really fresh and uh, vibrant uh, color. And uh, in the mouth as well, in the, in the perfume you would probably find a really um, red riddle fruit um, perfume, some strawberry. Even in the mouth, it was really yummy, fruity, it's like a ju juice of fruit. And uh, the acidity is still high because uh, we bottled it only a few months ago, so it needs to, to find uh, the right balance because it's still young, I mean, uh, still a few months uh, in, in a bottle. So... Is this vintage already um, sold on the market? No, we are starting right now, okay. that's, that's why. For, for, so for 22? Yeah. I'm really surprised because uh, this freshness is still there, even if it's uh, 19. So I'm really expecting uh, really good results from, from this wine because uh, being in the bottle for a longer time, I am sure it's gonna 
take the, the, the best results, uh, showing off these 3D notes and the freshness I need uh, to pair it with, uh, with food. So what we are looking for in general is, is elegance. And um, you, you can imagine uh, in, in uh, Primitivo, which is a really tough and uh, yummy <laughs> wine uh, with the high alcohols and so on, it's really, it's really challenging. So um, for, for us, uh, being here only since uh, 2008 has been always, uh, every vintage uh, is a way to learn and is a way to understand better what we could do to to get elegance in, in a wine that is uh, so strong and powerful. Okay, great. Let's, um, so are we ready to try mm -hmm. the... Monte Diavoli. Monte Diavoli. So in the Monte Diavoli, we decided to um, have... And what's the vintage? I'm sorry, 17. 2017. Uh, we decided to... Um, uh, play uh, with with a different aging, so we uh, age the wine in a um, big barrel of uh, 10 hectoliters. Mm -hmm. is uh, around 2,000 bottles, so it's uh, a few few quantity, and um, we decided to really um, trying to let the wine being dry, not too much uh, fruity. In, uh, but uh, try to follow even uh, the style uh, of, uh, of the soil that we found. So we understood immediately the difference between Kidro and Monte Diavoli about uh, the difference in uh, color of uh, clay. And we saw that uh, in the white clay, we, we were founding such, such... The white clay is to... Yeah, the soils that we used uh, in the, the Monte Passer, Diavoli. Monte Diavoli. Okay. Yeah. And, and, what are the, and what color is the soil from Kidro? Kidro, Kidro. Kidro. Red. Okay. Red clay. And what are the d main differences in terms of soil? The main differences uh, in, in the red clay, we would find much more fruitiness uh, and freshness. Uh, and uh, on the white clay, we found uh, much more tannins, but uh, in a fine way. So perfumes, uh, but not only in fruity notes, but also some um, Mediterranean herbs, aromatic herbs, much more balsamic and, uh, and spiced. So that's why we, we thought uh, to, to was, it could be interesting to, to divide uh, these kind of wines and create two different uh, DOC. Then in this one, as we, we thought it could, would be much more interesting to have a different aging, we decided to uh, use a big barrel and uh, try to age it much more, so at least two years and uh, one year in bottle. What, what do you think? <laughs> Completely different with, uh, with Kidro, from, from Kidro. I mean, this also has more age, right? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it shows. It says Monte dei Diavoli has yes. always dominated the entire estate with its 117 meters in height, so higher. Yes. Some people say that M Mesapi, how do you say that? Mesapi? Mesapi, Mesapi. Mesapi kept a sacred fire there. Nice. So, and what is the, in terms of the production volume, what are they? The volume is about 2,000 bottles for uh, Monte Diavoli and 8,000 bottles for Kidro. We just started producing them, so I thought uh, probably could increase them, I mean the number of bottles. Uh, but step by step, we should <laughs> first of all understand them and know them much more and introduce in the market. So it will not probably take uh, much more time to increase the number of bottles. Uh, even if we are producing um, some other bottles, I mean for the IGT, so we still are work in progress for, for them too. So what are, I mean, of course we love, you know, Italian wine, but what are, we love even food of course, and Puglia is so enriched with local cuisine. What are some of your recommendations for pairing um, for Kidro, but also Monte Diavoli? Uh, there are so many, I mean, um, here you could have um, many uh, meat, food, uh, and uh, especially even some, some pasta. So I probably recommend uh, some uh, orecchiette with uh, cime di rapa um, for Kidro, for example. So it's a, not, not really a, a daily wine, but could be. So probably a, a really tasty pasta 
and um, especially even for vegetarians that uh, only could uh, pair it with, uh, with this kind of food. And uh, for Monte Diavoli, I would say something much more tasty, so um, capocollo or with some, uh, some meat. So uh, here, Primitivo uh, usually is paired with uh, uh, Costolette di Agnello. Uh, <laughs> I don't okay. know how, how this in English. Costolette. Lamb, lamb, lamb chops. Lamb chops. Thank you, Stevie. Yeah, because also this, I thought I was, you know, I, was, I felt a lot more alcohol, but it, it, it does have a lot more alcohol on this one, right? It's 16.5 as versus 14.5. So you can, so this, this definitely has more structure, more alcohol, more, structure. more body. Yes. Right? So yes. this is a little bit more... Yeah, it's our uh, top, uh, top level wine, so mm -hmm. kind of a reserva. And uh, so we, we wanted to, to play and test uh, this kind of uh, intensity and complexity. But uh, you would find in wine not too much sugar on it. So you, you would find uh, a dry wine, an elegant wine that could be paired uh, with meat, but even with uh, other things. So the freshness and the acidity for us is, the, is really important to pa pair with, with food. Okay, great. So I think I'm going to close here in terms of the tasting of the two wines. Make sure you tune in um, to the other episode where we talk about uh, Masseria Kuturi in general and of course with our hostess, with the mostest, Camilla Rossi Chauvene, who is also the wine producer from, from Veneto, Verona, in particularly called Massimago. So tune in. Ciao ragazzi. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you for joining us on this first installment of Stevie's conversation with Camilla Rossi Chauvenet at the Masseria Cuturi Winery. Join Stevie again next time for more wine adventures. And remember, you can also find more wine content by visiting Italian Wine Podcast on SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever you get your pots. Cin cin!